Hello and welcome to ADS Skillseek. My name is Frank Massey. In this presentation, there's a joint collaboration between Man and Hummel and ADS and looking at some of the products that are being offered and delivered to us as an independent with the claim of matching OE quality and specification. Many of these products actually come with authenticated documentation, which in essence refers to the vehicle block exemption regulation. I'd like to begin by actually reading the actual regulation and its implication importance. The EEC block exemption regulation declares that a vehicle as a manufacturer's warranty may not be invalidated when the vehicle is serviced by an independent garage or workshop, provided the service parts installed match the quality and performance of the original equipment parts. That's the statement. Now, this investigation is a joint investigation that has quite a few implications, both as me as an individual, as a technician, and as a company, and of the type of service we like to think that we're offering our customer. Now, I'd like to begin by explaining some of the issues that we find as independent repair. We are, in effect, a specialist repairer, but we're finding an increased number of systems failures, particularly mechanical systems failures, usually caused by lubrication problems. And we've, to be honest, been rather ignorant as to the actual cause. And I think maybe now that we're uh, involved with this uh, joint cooperation with Mann and Hummel, that some of these issues can be both explained and understood. One of the components we often suffer a, a high percentage of failure is turbos and related high performance components. So let me begin by having a look at some of the products. Now, we have removed branding from uh, alternative products, um, but the issue here is the component structure, the lack of quality, um, and the difference of the internal components. So what I'd like to do now is just prepare a few examples of the internal components for a more detailed drill down into what actually um, is being presented to us from various manufacturers claiming to match the OE manufacturer specification. First, I'd like to begin with what is actually presented to, to me as a technician. I'm here in my own business. I've placed an order for some components to service a vehicle. It's my intention to provide the very best service to my customer, ensuring that his vehicle fully, um, fully comprises of the component functionality and the quality of uh, block exemption regulation. I'm presented with two possible alternatives. The original MAN filter, which does match the OEM requirement, and an alternative product whereby application size appearance appears to be exactly the same. There is a price advantage of this product, a small price advantage, but one that may appear attractive when trying to run a business where profit margins are under pressure. So what are we actually buying? Because I'll be honest, I can't see any reason why not to be tempted by that product. So let's take a look at what's actually inside each of these products in detail. First of all, and this is the filtration media from each of those products. There's two products I've picked up. Let's begin with the actual media. I did state earlier, this is the most expensive part of the filter and therefore probably the part that's targeted more aggressively when saving cost. Now I am carefully removing the, the media from its retainer. And I think you can see by implication of the way that it's coming out that one of the issues here is surface area. And still a little to go yet. And it's my intention to pull all of this media out so that 
we can examine exactly that surface area. Now this is something, to be honest, you would never normally do when opening the product from its delivery box. And we're nearly there. Right. I don't think my arms are going to be long enough, but let's keep going, keep going. Uh, my arms are not going to be long enough. Right, we've got so far. And we're nearly going to go twice. That is the surface area of the MAN OE application filter for that particular vehicle. In contrast, and I did refer to this product, I've already removed some of the media because it's qu not quite as thick. It's also rather um, rigid, as would be my um, naive explanation. And I want to ensure that it is fully out of the casing. And I think this is not going to need any further explanation. That is the available surface area to filter and protect that engine over its normal service life. It is about one third, it's certainly less than half the amount of media material on the original filter. So clearly, given if the service life of this vehicle is 20,000 miles, it is simply not possible for that reduction in material to provide the same protection. Here we have, now this is once again a direct replacement of an OE part number. This is the MAN OE specification. This is clearly um, greatly reduced media. This is an alternative uh, media assembly sold with um, claimed matching OEM specification. And you recall the comments I made about the end caps forming a perfectly um, oil tight seal at each end of the, the media assembly. The most obvious comment uh, and observation with this, and this sold as I say as, a, as a, an equivalent part number, no end caps are used in the assembly and design of this media um, assembly. The intention is that each of these um, pleats is glued and sealed. Now what I'd like to do is just take any one of these at random and I'm applying a very small amount of pressure and you can see that simply with very light pressure that those pleats part company very easily. So clearly just the pure pressure of the oil is going to force them apart. One of the most critical components is this bypass valve and the purpose of this valve is in the event of the media being restricted or blocked, this valve will open allowing oil to bypass unfiltered through the filtration element to maintain lubrication to the engine. And I draw your attention to the fact that the OE MAN filter has a rubberized seat and a great deal of exposed area allowing the oil to enter the engine system. Now you'll notice that the retention of this spring and the surface area, once that valve is opened, is considerable. In other words, the actual volume of oil um, required to protect the engine can pass through that filter without um, any interruption. The actual pressure of the spring is critical to a particular engine design. That requirement is specified by the engine manufacturer. Regrettably, um, a lot of these alternative filters don't have the right relief um, rating on that spring. You notice the surface area of that device compared with this. Now, I think it's quite clear that in the event of this valve opening, and I make the point that that spring does not retain the same pressure, it opens much easier. And I would like to understand, I actually served my time as a professional engine builder, 
how that very small aperture is capable of passing sufficient oil into the engine. And clearly it's not. And in this case, this has to be, and this has not in any way been engineered for the purpose of this investigation. This is exactly as removed from an alternative, quote, claiming OE specification product. You can see that the valve isn't seating at all. So there's leakage immediately there, unfiltered leakage through that filter. And what is, it's like a little poppet spring. It's like one of these little child's toys that make a clicking noise, like a clicker. And you can see the amount of pressure to open that is negligible. In fact, it's irrelevant because it's already off its seat and leaking. What I'd like to show you is how important this valve actually is. It's just not a, a random valve to be taken casually. I did say that each engine designer has a specification for the bypass valve. This is just an example of four only, and there are many different bypass valve settings. And this has the intention of explaining the amount of pressure that it takes to open these different valves. And that is extremely light valve and they gradually become more robust to this particular valve, which takes a, a, a fair degree of pressure for it to open. Now, clearly, this type of individuality is not being embodied in some of these alternative products. In contrast to the MAN OE specification seal, let's take a look at alternative brand, which is an exact replacement. And immediately you can see a major issue visually. When we examine the actual sealing arrangement, as I previously stated, that seal is responsible for forming um, a total seal so that no oil can pass from the base plate of the filter, as well as preventing drain back. This particular media assembly, apart from the fact that it, it isn't even concentric, it's extremely eccentric, has an extremely sharp protrusion, which when placed in the assembly under pressure, will quite literally cut into that seal. And in contrast to the man, filter clearly doesn't fit. The flashing is an incredible uh, oversight in terms of quality assurance and inspection. And the actual fitting on the base plate is rather flimsy. Um, it's less surface area and the robust rubberized material doesn't have the flexibility to ensure a total seal. So it's a major issue when preventing oil from draining back um, as well as forming a seal, preventing any passage of oil uh, entering the filter and through the filtering media. So um, I think it's quite clear there that, um, and really a quite an appalling state of affairs when it's ma a, a, a being sold and offered as matching quality. Let's examine the base plate. The thread which retains the filter onto the uh, engine block or the, the filter housing. This is the, the MAN OEM matching quality. And as a precision engineer, which is my original trade, um, I'm drawn to the fact that when I examine the thread, and it may be difficult to see this detail on camera, uh, it's a clean cut, nice bright finish, no burrs. In fact, as I run my finger around, nice smooth finish and thread count 
is one, two, three, four, five actual um, turns on the thread. In contrast to the alternative brand, there are some burrs on that thread. The most alarming issue is there are only three threads in that assembly. So the security of that filter is also reduced. And on this other product, which has been featured in some of the other comments, examining this thread, it's quite clear as I run my finger around, there are actually burrs, quite sharp burrs. Now, of course, if any of that metallic swarf were to become dislodged and go into the old gallery, um, that would cause severe damage to any bearing material. So once again, from an engineering point of view, there are some great compromises and some very basic requirements of the oil filter casing. It looks smooth. This is the problem. When you buy these filters, you look at them from the outside, they, they appear quite similar in nature. Manoe, alternative. Um, they look quite similar in nature, but when we turn it over, here we can see metallic flashing. Now, I'm tempted to say that some of that is actually um, quite capable of breaking away from the casing. And the point I was going to make was that this seal um, doesn't fit at all well. In fact, that face is rather rough. And with flashings like that, clearly uh, is an issue. And really, having understood what's inside a filter, and I, I accept my ignorance prior to this investigation, can now begin to understand why perhaps some components like turbochargers are failing prematurely through um, a lack of lubrication. So I think uh, there's enough evidence here just to raise concern that as an independent, as a person who's proud in the business that I operate and the service I offer to my customer, that we have um, a serious issue of broken promise. Um, I make a promise to my customer to give him the very best care and attention, uh, both in terms of the labour and the components we offer. And the issue of what minor cost is involved. Now, fortunately, we, we, we generally don't go for cost, we go for quality. Uh, but my concern is that when I'm being offered a product, in the past I have taken it for granted that when supported with, as I said, claimed documentation about matching OE, um, I've taken it on face value. Um, and I think this investigation by Man and Hummel clearly, and I am extremely interested to know just how much technology there is in a simple component of an oil filter. Um, we can take a look at some of the cost implications which, which when broken down, are indeed minute. Let's take a look at the actual cost implications. Average service mileage of a vehicle around 20,000 miles. Currently, the average mileage driven by a UK motorist is 10,000 miles and dropping. So we can assume that the average motorist will change a filter every two years to comply with the OE specification. Now let's imagine the cost difference between the OE man filter and an alternative is around 25%. There's a pound difference in price. Divided by two years, that's 50 pence per year as a savings implication. I will use the word savings cautiously. What about the consequences? Reduce loss of engine protection. I've mentioned already, as an independent specialist company, we are constantly replacing expensive major service items that have failed mechanically through a deterioration or failure of lubrication. Contaminants bypass engine damage, accelerated wear on startup, gradual leakage and uh, total oil loss, embitterment and disintegration of media, and that is something we've seen also, increased carbon content in, in the lubricant, diesel DPFs is a major issue that we're um, currently 
uh, going through. Increased wear and increased emissions also with diesel. Turbocharger wear and damage is something we have suffered. And loss of customers and a loss of integrity um, within our industry. We're all proud to be able to repair vehicles independently whilst maintaining the black exemption regulation. And I think um, if we don't or are not aware of the risk of losing that right of repair or uh, even worse, exposing the customer and ourselves to breaking that regulation, I think we're doing a disservice to our own industry as well as our own business. So I'd like to thank you for watching this uh, investigation. I hope you found it interesting. I found it incredibly interesting, the amount of detail. Uh, I now understand the functioning components of an oil filter. I feel quite embarrassed having been in the industry for 43 years. Now I know so much more. And it's also challenged my belief in a lot of other products that are also being offered to us. So I hope you found that as of interest as I have. And thank you for joining me and hopefully see you soon.